Hello, welcome. This is Benevolent History here, and I'm here to give you a little bit of an introduction to uh, a new a Rome Total War campaign. It's a uh, it's a faction that is generally unknown and not to be used. Um, there's a faction if you like. Uh, the only way to get this faction is to essentially modify the game files. Um, this, it's you should if you want to know how to do this you should just google it check uh, how to unlock all the factions you should find some helpful links there anyway I'm talking about the slaves and rebels I, I just recently played a new campaign with them and I must say they're very very different from the rest of the um, rest of the um, rest of the factions like uh, I'll give you I'll give you like a brief rundown essentially let's see so let's continue. I'm just gonna go on the map and show you. So this is an introduction. Just uh, enjoy it. God. Never mind. It's basically the Julii introduction. So I'm sure you can find that on the on YouTube somewhere if you're really interested. So essentially, the rebels, um, the rebels begin off with uh, a lot of factions scattered all over the place um, you see one one on Britain some in Italy some in um, Europe you have Suggesta here which is yeah you have some cities scattered all over the place you see here you have Athens as well that's gonna be like a major city that you'll have Byzantium that's also a pretty major city so you have some cities in the way out up here um, so yeah you have some cities most of them are very very undeveloped because uh, um, if you notice that while you're playing the game you'll see that the rebel villages generally have nothing um, you see some of the some of the towns that the rebels have like Athens or um, I think what is it called Palmyra have um, governor's houses but the but the rest of them mainly the ones in Europe you know in the Germania and Gaul Gallic areas you'll see that these things are very underdeveloped like uh yeah you see a lot of these towns are actually villages they don't even have governor houses built yet and uh yeah, see so Lepsis Magna, you have uh, also Nept down, way down here. So, you're basically a faction commanding all the rebels. Now, how does that work? <laughs> you, you must ask. Well, um, essentially, there's a lot to go with the rebels. I mean, f first off, the rebel faction, so to speak, is not exactly a culture. Um, just think of like the rebels as having many different cultures within the faction as in um, for example the units you build and the build type of buildings you have um, essentially Greek city cities in Greece like this you can see here have a Greek unit recruitment see here and uh, Greek buildings that you could build and uh, buildings in let's say for in barbarian areas like uh let's see like uh this area for example you can see that you can only build um barbarian stuff barbarian buildings and i think you could only recruit barbarian units i also have to mention that the rebel faction so to speak um when you try and recruit units uh it's very it's very unpredictable, I, I would say, because uh, in some settlements you can build, um, you can build units. Like uh, I know in Athens, you could build militia hoplites. I'm not sure if you could build hoplites though. You probably can build hoplites. Um, it's just that some factions, in some factions you could build stuff. Some factions, in in some buildings you could build stuff. In some buildings you don't. Like um, Greek areas, you can only build Greek units. Like hoplite units in let's say eastern areas for example you could only build eastern infantry 
and uh, even in um, Halva, some buildings you cannot produce units at all. Like uh, I, I know that um, I've read that there are there are lots of barbarian, the mainly the barbarians, barbarian areas. You can't build anything in there. You can't even build war bands, which is pain in the butt, in my opinion. So. So if you notice, when you go to the faction scroll, so to speak, when you go to like, uh, let's see, when you see this family tree, you'll notice that you have no, f you have no family members at all, um, which is very strange, very strange for a faction. But um, I should say there are a few ways to obtain generals. Um, you know, well, there's basically only one way to obtain a general. As in, you have to get like a lucky rebel spawn, you know, those um, rebel spawns all over the place. Um, when you, you, when you, when you're usually playing a, a game as a usual faction, you'll notice that rebels will spawn as brigands um, or other or other types of um, names affiliated with the rebels. You'll notice that there are lots of rebel spawns all over the place. Now, sometimes. Sometimes those rebel spawns turn out to be like uh, uh, um, you'll spawn with a general. So essentially, um, the type of general you get depends on w where it spawns. Like uh, sometimes, let's say if you get a rebel army that spawns in um, a barbarian area like Gaul or Germania, you'll see that you'll obtain a barbarian general. Just uh yeah, you'll obtain a barbarian general. And like in the east, you'll obtain, and if it, if you if a general spawns in the east, you'll obtain a an eastern general, and and in Greece, a Greek general, and so on. Um, the three type of generals, that, as I have mentioned, there's the regular general, just like any other general you'll find in a regular faction. There's also a general unit that has traits. But um, it's not it's not affiliated with the general's unit. Instead, it's attached to um, another different kind of unit. I'm sure you see those. It's, you've seen those in your campaigns before. It's like a um, it's like a general with traits, except it's with another another unit. Like it could be with a ca another cav unit, like a horse archer unit. Uh, that's pretty strange, but that happens. There's also like a, a generals that ha that are like that don't have any traits or names as associated with them, but they have um, how do I explain this? But you have the generals unit, so it's basically like a, another cav unit, but you don't really see the general. Well, the general is not there. Well. Yeah, general. The general's traits are not there. Well, there's a lot of stuff to talk about. Um, uh, rebel factions. Also, humorously enough, you notice that all these cities are basically red, and you, you notice that a lot of these cities are red, right? Like the city of Bostra, it's red. The populace is very angry, right? So if you end the turn. And if you notice, when you end the turn, none of your cities buy it. None of them. So yeah, that city, Bostra didn't riot. Not none of your cities rioted essentially. And you can see one of the examples of rebel spawns right now. And apparently, I have a rebel spawn here. Yeah, peasant. That's a nice rebel spawn. Yeah, it's gonna really help out. Rebel spawn here. Rebel spawn here. Yeah, a lot of rebel spawns. Which is strange. Now I just got lucky rebel spawn at Hatra. Um, sometimes you can get lucky. You see here. Uh, in this case, um, on the first turn, I apparently got a lot, a lot of rebel spawns. Um, usually this doesn't really happen. Like, uh, this is strange. I could just do that. Sometimes you can get a lucky rebel spawn and actually able to take care of a city like that and just capture it 
So, as usual with any other factions, when you capture a settlement, you could exterminate the populace, occupy and whatnot. And you could construct, build, and do whatnot with your um, factions, with your bu buildings. Um, yeah, so essentially, you, as I was going before, your, your, your cities don't rebel. So you can essentially juice up the taxes to very high mode. And none of your cities will rebel, <laughs> which is very useful. Um, very good and very um, interesting in that sense. Um, I would also say I would like to also say you begin off with a lot of troops. Like uh, you can see how the Canals you have quite a few troops, but the bad thing is they are basically all separated all over the map. So if you want to play as the rebels, you essentially have to um, concentrate your troops. Like uh, in that, what I mean is you have to. Essentially, when, when you play as the rebels, you have to put yourself in a mindset and basically sacrifice settlements on one side and just concentrate everything else on another. Um, I, what I suggest doing when you're playing as the rebels, um, I suggest basically throw, just um, sacrificing all these western settlements because they're absolutely useless in my opinion. And like, concentrate in areas like Greece, like you, could, you should send all your, Greece in, all your troops in Greece. Like uh, you can see all these troops up here you begin with. I think I suggest do what I suggest doing is basically combining all these troops, send them to Dacia or something like that, and also send them then send them south into um, Greece in order to capture all those settlements. And you see, um, prime targets would also be Rhodes. You can see here, and also Asia Minor would be in, would be good to attack because uh you begin off with a pretty sizable army in Halicarnassus and you can build a peasant here as well. Essentially at the beginning of the rebel turn what I suggest doing is basically disbanding all these war bands and these barbarian cav units and disbanding any rebel spawns you may have like in this area. Obviously enough this this one peasant in Eumedia is not going to do anything. So it's best for me to disband it. You can see here this this, these two ultra warbands, they're not going to do anything. So, disband. Sometimes you might get lucky and get a rebel spawn like this, <laughs> like in Hatra, like I did here, in which you'll be able to capture a settlement. In that case, then by all means, capture the settlement. But, uh, in most cases, the rebel spawns will be absolutely useless. Also, I must say that, um, let's see. You, you can have rebel navies like this, so you'll basically most of the time you'll always be in in um in good supply of these pirate ships and they'll act as very good um naval ships you can recruit naval ships as um as the rebels i've noticed when you build a dock you can recruit biremes i'm not sure about triremes but um i haven't checked that out yet now what else to build what else to see um uh, also you'll notice that um the, re the rebels right now, at least for me, they're in minus three thousand nine hundred. Um, that's because um, you get if you as the rebels you get very very poor very quickly. Your economy essentially sucks at the very beginning. What you have to do is disband any unnecessary units like uh, these two units and these two settlements. I'm I'm not gonna bother with them. So in my opinion, it's probably best to only keep one unit one cheap unit around like these war bands there's no point in keeping them you can see in Lepsis Magna two town militia no point you can see um inept really I'm not going to use these new median most new median cap for anything and also in Tara it's uh really no point in keeping these war bands sure you might lose the settlement but if you could concentrate all your all the rest of your forces and send them east and conquer Dacia and then head south into Greece or head east into Thrace, you'll be able to even if you have minus this much money, you'll be able to eventually obtain um, enough provinces in order to gain all that money back. Also, um, I have to mention that there's also an interesting settlement up here, um, Demiscre. And you actually get these Amazon chariots. Now, um, these are an interesting unit. Uh, 
I po I personally suggest just building a peasant heal the first turn and sending all these girls out and possibly an attack Scythia maybe. I I haven't really progressed through the campaign that much yet. Now these Amazon chariots, they're pretty useful units you can see here. Um that that they're basically like uh just think of them like Egyptian Egyptian chariot archers. Yeah, um, yeah, these units just just useless in my opinion. These these settlements, just uh, probably throw just yeah, throw away basically all these units. You don't need them, or you could concentrate all these units, but I I don't think it's worth doing because these war bands have like two hundred upkeep, which is very high. It's it's insane almost. So essentially, I suggest concentrate everything you have on the east like in this area like for example if you combine all of these troops you'll obtain a pretty sizable army and when you when you combine all these troops you could easily wreak havoc into into the into modern day Israel and maybe into Egypt also the rebel spawns you get um, they they essentially become your units. You probably guessed that, and you're allowed to basically use them for anything. So there you go. <laughs> so you won't be really you won't be really much bothered by any um, rebel spawns. They'll actually be used to your advantage um, if you get lucky with them, like how I did in Hatra. Also, I know in some settlements you could, as the rebels, you could recruit um, diplomats. Let's see, if I can find one here. Yeah. You can recruit diplomats here as the as rebels, but essentially diplomats you cannot um, make peace with anyone. And if you see here, you'll notice that all the factions are enemies with you. So uh, you're really gonna have to be very good in your battle, very good in your micro when you battle, because you really need to retain all these units. The diplomat is. Um, only for bribing. You cannot make peace. You cannot have a ceasefire with any other faction. So I guess that's a little introduction to the rebels. I hope you enjoyed. And I must say that when you begin off as the rebels, you're gonna lose a lot of provinces very, very quickly. You as rebels, you're gonna have to quickly consolidate your strength. You have a huge empire, but the empire is very fragile. And like the Seleucids in the beginning stage, you're gonna have to quickly, um, you're gonna have to quickly take the offensive on other factions. You cannot total with the rebels, so to speak. You have to quickly blitz other factions and attack them. So hope you enjoyed this little um, rundown of the rebels. I might make a, I might actually begin a campaign commentary for these rebels. I think it'd be a pretty interesting campaign. So, hope you enjoyed watching, hope you comment, subscribe, I hope you rate it, and I hope you enjoyed watching, so see you later.